Okay, everybody, welcome back to RC Tail Dragon. Um, today we're working on the Hobby Lobby Telemaster 66 build. This will be uh, part five of the series. Today we'll be uh, skipping around a little bit. We'll have the wings on the table for a little bit, and then the fuselage again. So we got some cool stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Okay, and we are back. Um, got the wings back up here on the workbench for uh, this next little segment. Um, in a previous video, you recall I was discussing servo setup and um, this plane, I believe, originally having one servo. Um, this is an older kit. Um, so I was going to do that. Um, but then one of my uh, subscribers, Don, um, suggested, well, Maybe having the uh, ribs in the original place and then hanging two servos upside down here. That would give us the uh, dual servo functionality, but uh, yet leaving the clean wing design that I want. So you won't see the servos at all when the wing's on. I like that idea. Give us a nice clean wing. No servos up here. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Again, thanks Don for mentioning that. i um, not sure why that didn't come to me right away, but I'm glad you mentioned it. Appreciate the comments. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on that for a bit and uh, see what I can get done on this center section today. And I'll be right back. Got the two servos in. Basically, I just uh, cut two notches into the center rib and dropped a couple pieces of basswood across here. Give us a nice uh, platform to screw the servos into. Um, got the bottom sheeting on. So it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so originally I thought about staggering one of these servos, but... Um, I did a little market research on Facebook, and uh, that was a big no. So I went ahead and turned it back around and put it like it's supposed to. And um, pretty cool. So basically, I have um, the two servo option for the wings. Um, I just didn't install the uh, servos up on the wing panels. I wanted to keep everything nice and clean. So these servos will be hidden down inside the fuselage. Um and the control horns will come out here, which will also be inside the fuselage. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. I still have to do the uh, sheeting on the other side, but I will um, do that offline and um, uh, see about getting the, um, the control rods installed. So, okay, so now I'm going to go back to the fuselage again and continue on. I'm going to show you what we got done there, and uh, that's where we'll be concentrating today so I will be right back okay and we are back again got the fuselage back up here on the table I just wanted to show you what I've gotten done over the past week here and there um, I got the servo tray made for the uh, rudder and elevator servos and um, as I mentioned before it's not glued in yet um, I'll be able to slide this forward or aft um, to help me uh, get the CG just right. Um, so that'll be glued in later. One of the last things, we'll get the um, push rods hooked up. But yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Take that out for now. Um, in the bottom, I got the uh, landing gear hard points mounted in. Um, now I did a test fit of the landing gear wires and they weren't, one of them wasn't sitting quite flat in here. So I don't know if I got to do some fiddling with the wood or if, um, the bend here needs a little bit of adjustment to get it to go in flat, but we'll work on that. 
and get that done. Um, I ordered a battery tray, a two-piece uh, plastic battery tray. Part of it mounts into the plane, and the other piece snaps in with um, the battery Velcroed to it. Um, but I didn't put these bottom pieces on yet because I wanted the access to that to get it installed. That should be here hopefully early next week, so uh, that's on hold for now. Um, I got the E-Flight Power 25 mounted. Um, I used a couple of uh, three mil pieces of ply to make a little spacer to get it uh, to come out where I wanted it to. And that's pretty good. Um, I used a couple of washers to introduce a little right thrust. Uh, maybe there's two degrees in there, I don't know. Um, we can make adjustments to that after the first flight if it's way off. Okay, now you remember that this was um, originally a glow plane. So basically you had the cylinder sticking out here and the crankshaft out the front here. So this was um, originally going to be all open, including this top piece. The only original piece is the bottom one here. But I wanted to close it off, so I added a little piece of ply here, one mil I think it was. Um, cut an opening for some airflow. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Still have to do all the sanding for it. Um, also, I need to make a hatch. Now, I don't know if I'm going to make two hatches. Um, I thought maybe I could screw this one on, making it as uh, accessible if there is a motor problem. I don't anticipate that, but um, I'm thinking about doing that instead of gluing it on. And then the battery will go in here, so we'll have a, a hatch here with magnets. So I don't know if I'm going to do two hatches or if I'm going to just do one big hatch with magnets. I'll decide that as I go along. But um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I think I might uh, continue on with that now and get it go into my stock and find a nice um, sturdy piece uh, for the hatch and see if we can't get rough cut out and uh, see what I want to do with that. So... Um, Gonna be going with that right now, and um, I will be right back when I have something to show you. Okay, and we are back. <clears throat> um, I got a blank made for the hatch. Um, I didn't have any four inch wide, thicker sheeting, so I had to glue two pieces together here. Um, <clears throat> it still has to be sanded on the sides. This is just rough cut. I put a, a 45 bevel in there to fit up against this I guess that's the windscreen um, and I made a couple of keys so yeah basically now I need to sand this thing to match the side profile and we'll have a, a slight taper off to the front here so it'll be a little bit thinner in the front um, yeah, we have a bunch of sanding to do. So, basically, I was trying to figure out earlier if I was going to have one or two hatches. Still haven't decided yet. But <clears throat> if I do um, decide to go with the two, then uh, I'll sand this whole thing before I cut it. So, we don't have to sand two separate pieces individually. So, yeah, looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on with that for a little bit here and um, then see what else we can get into. I'll be right back. Okay, we are back for a second here. I wanted to um, take a few moments here and talk about weight, uh, weight and balance. Um, for any new builders out there, if you've been building for a while, this is second nature to you, but um, bear with me while I point some things out to them. Okay, so if you build your plane, you find out that it's a little nose heavy and you want to add some weight in the tail. Um, it would take less weight in the tail than it would, say, up here. If you imagine the center of gravity being your fulcrum point, if you added the weight right here, for example, maybe you have to add um, two ounces. But if you add it all the way back here, you might only have to add one ounce because of the fulcrum and the leverage of the length of this fuselage. 
So, um, yeah, so the further back you add your weight, the less of it you're probably going to need. Um, if you add a lot of weight here, it's not going to do as much quickly for you. So, yeah, that's what we want to do that. Um, another thing I want to point out is make that weight work for you. If you added lead to the back here somewhere from underneath maybe, that's all dead weight. That's not doing anything except balance the plane. What I like to do is, is make that weight have a second job. Um, make it work for its uh, ride into the air. Um, for example, maybe you have to add a couple ounces of um, tail weight here. Add it in the form of sheeting. Maybe you need so much weight that you can afford to add another piece of sheeting on top of this fuselage. That's going to give it a second job, strength and structure. So um, consider that when you're building your planes. That's why I'm building this whole thing before I cover it. Um, if I do need to add weight, I can add it in the form of um, something that's going to have another function other than just adding weight. Maybe I would want to add another um, former in here or something, um, for example. Or again, you can add it in the form of balsa, where that can be sanded in and uh, blended in well. Um, so yeah, a lot of things you can do. Um, but I try to avoid adding dead weight because it, um, it does nothing. It gets a free ride into the air. Um, we want it to have a second job. So always be thinking about that when you're building your plane. Um, where you might be able to add some strength or structure to it later if you need to. So yeah, that's just a little something I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, for anybody who's never built a plane before. Um something to think about. We're always thinking ahead at weight and battery placement and all kinds of different things. Okay, and we are back again, everybody. i um, been working on the hatch. Um, got it sanded to the width. Um, and I sandled, sanded a taper into it so you can see it's about half as thick in the front as it is in the back. Um, I might do a little bit more sanding here to thin that thin it up a little bit more but we'll see um, the keys help it line up got a bit of a round sanded into the sides here we'll do the same with the front here in a bit but yeah that's looking pretty good and um, we'll have to wait till the next video to see what I decide about cutting this hatch I think I probably will um, if I cut it like at a 45 it'll give the um, the battery hatch a lip to slide into um, the front piece will be screwed in with four little screws and then I'll cover over the screws so you won't see them um, as I said I'll only need to go into this area if there's an issue with the motor and um, if that's the case then I'll just pop through the uh, covering and get the screws out um, but yeah that's what we've got going on that I think it's looking pretty sharp it's boxy. There's not a lot of sexiness to it, but it's it's fun build anyways. Looking pretty good. All right, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Um, sorry there wasn't a whole lot of gluing in this episode, but honestly, there's not a whole lot left. Um, we're really getting down to the wire here, getting to the point where we need to start sanding and covering. Um, but yeah, I'm waiting on that battery tray to come in. Hopefully that's supposed to be here Monday. We'll get that installed. We'll get the bottom sheeting installed um, on the fuselage um, uh, front section there, bottom section. And then um, I will be assembling this thing together to do a mock-up for weight and balance. We'll do that check before we install or before we cover any of the plane. So yeah, hopefully uh, you'll tune back in with us again here maybe next week. Um, We'll uh, be continuing on with the Hobby Lobby Telemaster 66 build. Please don't forget to subscribe, um, hit that uh, like button, and leave a comment if you'd like. And I really would love to see you back here for the next um, part six coming up. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a great weekend.